That is why America cannot turn inward. That is why Europe cannot turn inward. America has no better partner than Europe. Now, now is the time to build new bridges across the globe as strong as the one that binds us across the Atlantic. Now is the time to join together through constant cooperation and strong institutions and shared sacrifice and a global commitment to progress to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Barack Obama also became the first sitting president to ever become the chair of the Security Council for the United Nations, which only further cites his allegiance to world government. In an era when our destiny is shared, power is no longer a zero-sum game. No one nation can or should try to dominate another nation. No world order that elevates one nation or group of people over another will succeed. No balance of power among nations will hold. The traditional divisions between nations of the South and the North make no sense in an interconnected world. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. The globalists who know that Obama is going to promote their uh, plan want to make him uh, such a superhero that nobody will question what he's doing. He is very much a product of the system that he is now technically in charge of. Obama alone, or the Democrat Party alone, is not responsible for his massive rock star uh, status. It's been done by the media. This establishes that Obama is an unapologetic globalist who holds no one nation above another, despite its policies. Perhaps we should move towards a society more like China, if that's the case. After all, on the 60th anniversary of the Communist Mao regime takeover, the Empire State Building, once a proud symbol of the United States, was lit in the colors of the Communist Party halfway across the world. In fact, following the United Nations Copenhagen Conference in December of 2009, the Washington Post ran the headline, Copenhagen Climate Deal Shows New World Order May Be Led by U.S., China. The Copenhagen Conference was disguised as a summit that would save the planet from man-made global warming by cutting carbon emissions. When taking a look at the almost 200-page document that was being proposed, it becomes evident that this was yet another attempt to establish global government and set up a global tax. In Section 38, it states, The scheme for the new institutional arrangement under the Convention will be based on three basic pillars, government, facilitative mechanism, and financial mechanism. In Section 47, subsection F, it discusses cap-and-trade schemes and carbon taxes and the use of new and existing flexible carbon market mechanisms. These cap-and-trade schemes were just that, a scheme to further transfer the wealth from the poor to the ultra-rich. One of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. The fact that our president even attended should be considered treason. Just weeks before the conference, ClimateGate hit the media. Secret emails confirm that many of the United Nations lead scientists had engaged in fraud in order to promote the idea that man-made global warming was occurring and that carbon dioxide was a toxic gas. In reality, they admitted the Earth had been cooling for the last decade and that they had destroyed the source data in order to ensure the scientific community would be unable to review their findings. Bill Jones was forced to resign from his position at East Anglia University and Penn State has launched an investigation into Michael Mann. Because of the scandal, many countries refused to sign the agreement, and instead only 25 heads of state, including rock star president and savior Barack Obama, signed a much shorter and broader accord. The document states that a high-level panel will be created, and that parties will be subject to domestic auditing, supervision, and assessment. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. The idea that carbon dioxide, the life force for plants here on Earth, is a toxic gas and should be taxed is laughable. There have been numerous periods of time in which the Earth has had vastly more carbon in the atmosphere than present day. In areas where there have been volcanic eruptions which emit large amounts of CO2, plants have benefited and there is no negative impact on the surrounding environment, as well as indigenous people from the excess carbon dioxide. The globalists promote this theory to keep mankind in fear, not only for the establishment of a global government and a global carbon tax, but the literal control of the entire planet. 
An even darker side to the scam of man-made global warming exists. In reality, it's about population control. Ted Turner reveals himself here in this interview with Charlie Rose. We've got to stabilize the population. When I was born, no, there so was what's too, wrong with the population? I mean, with too many people. That's what. That's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. We've got to stabilize population on a voluntary basis. Everybody in the world's got to pledge to themselves that one or two children is it. Not doing it will be catastrophic. We'll have eight degrees, we'll be eight degrees hotter in 10, not 10, but in 30 or 40 years, and basically none of the crops will grow, most of the people will have died, and the rest of us will be cannibals, civilization will have broken down, What the few people that are left will be living in a failed state like Somalia or Sudan, and, and living conditions will be intolerable, the droughts will be so bad there'll be no more corn growing, it, it will, the, the, not doing it is suicide. Unbelievably, when Turner met with other globalists, David Rockefeller, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Michael Bloomberg, and even Oprah Winfrey to discuss population control, they were portrayed as superheroes. Behind closed doors on this New York campus, a secret gathering of some of the world's most powerful people. Gates, Buffett, Bloomberg, Winfrey. It was like, well, it was like the Super Friends. In the great hall of the Justice League, there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes. Together with others at the meeting, including George Soros, Ted Turner, David Rockefeller, they're worth more than $125 billion. The new Superman and Wonder Woman, the super rich friends, not fighting bad guys, but fighting for good nonetheless. Would a superhero call for a one-child policy? Would a superhero call for population control? In a recent interview, he claims that two billion people would be ideal. That means four billion plus must die to accommodate a man who owns more acreage than anyone else on the planet. Let's not forget that Ted Turner is the president of the United Nations Foundation. There are countless examples of how we are being indoctrinated to accept these kind of conditions and believe that man and his activities are the problem. From the promotion of climate cops, We're the carbon cops and we're on the lookout for energy wasters the phony liberals and conservatives getting together to promote climate change. Now, let's face it, we're polar opposites. We couldn't be further apart. I'm on the left. And I'm usually right. And we strongly disagree. Except on one issue. Tell them what it is, Reverend Pat. That would be our planet. Taking care of it is extremely important. We all need to work together, liberals and conservatives. So get involved. It's the right thing to do. Now, there you go again. The New World Order will stop at nothing to achieve planetary dominance, whether it be assassination, wars based on lies, and even a phony environmental movement. So it should come as no surprise that they have been tracking, tracing, and databasing our lives for years. Many people are aware that the Bush administration engaged in warrantless wiretaps on American citizens. What they don't understand is that it has come out in court that all the major telecommunications companies have been secretly storing every piece of data received from our phones and our computers and handing them over to the National Security Agency. You heard about the government secretly listening in on phone conversations without a warrant, but there is evidence that your email is also being tapped. The government has been intercepting most emails as part of its terrorist surveillance program. That program has been criticized as illegal because it's missing an important ingredient search warrants. Several years ago, Klein says he came to suspect that AT&T had installed secret computer gear designed to spy on internet traffic at the request of the National Security Agency. This is just a small part of the picture, as AT&T was not the only company involved and emails were not the only issue. The NSA was installing Norris Insight Systems, which are capable of monitoring billions of bits of internet traffic per second. It was also able to monitor any calls traffic through its system, all websites visited, all instant messaging, and separate types of transaction records. The secret room at AT&T contains gear which enables the government to look at every individual message on the internet and analyze exactly what people are doing. Here's another document. It mentions a company called Naris. Naris makes computer software that can swallow and analyze 10 gigabytes of information every second. That means it could go through all the information in all the books in the Library of Congress in a little over 15 minutes. 
The documents Klein and others were able to produce were then censored by the NSA. Bankston isn't allowed to talk about the documents in detail. The government has since had them sealed. But he says what is in there boggles the mind. We are talking about a substantial portion of all the communications traffic in the United States. The policies have been shielded by the Obama administration and continue to this day. Attorney General Holder has publicly stated lawsuits be thrown out of court. And after several attempts, Klein and other cases were thrown out as well. Once again citing the national security of what used to be a constitutional republic, not a massive corrupt slave state. Living in the New World Order when it's close to completion for the average citizen, for people like you and me, is going to be essentially slavery. We're never going to be able to get ahead. We're never going to be able to amass enough wealth uh, essentially to retire or to, to do what we want to do in life. We're going to constantly be working for the man. They're creating essentially a two-class system. So it's going to be an inner ruling elite and then